Howdy, 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 my name is Anachi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. So, I said I was going to do this immediately after Christmas, but I had some <clears throat> some things come up that prevented me from being able to do that the way I wanted to. So anyway, now that we're back, in the last episode, Carcat was reaching out to people to help him with uh, Gamsey going on a murderous rampage, and also Aridin going on a murderous rampage, and possibly Friska going on a murderous rampage. So, in this page, Jerezzi's returning to the computer lab. You foolishly misplaced your glasses during your heroic revival attempt, leaving you with no way of communicating with the others to warn them. This is why you really should carry no less than five computers on you at all times like a sensible person. But there's no one in here. Just someone taking a nap on the horn pile over there, and a big puddle of something next to the transportalizer. Grub sauce, maybe? You hope it's grub sauce. Please be grub sauce. Sample grub sauce. Someone either had a major sauce accident earlier, or this is the scene of a yet another real-life murder. Your team is so lucky to have you around to sleuth these heinous crimes. And yet, the body is missing. Can't conduct much forensic analysis without it. This is exactly why you should never turn your back on a body, not even for a second. Examine horn pile. <clears throat> this was no nap. This was another murder! What is going on in this lab? Examine the body. Another textbook impaling. Your perp has been busy tonight. Wait, there appears to be a smaller pair of mar a pair of smaller marks on the victim's neck. Examine marks. Hmm. Has the killer really developed a taste for blood? She's completely out of control. According to your expert analysis, she barged in here with a lance, her new weapon of choice. This startled everyone in the room so much it triggered a dreadful grub sauce spill and or chainsaw accident. Causing the missing victim to lose a large volume of blood and or grub sauce. Horrified by the sight, everyone fled the room except for the present victim who was napping on the horn pile. The perpetrator in her deranged state of mind then sampled the split the spilt green blood sauce on the floor. Her thirst peaked, she became tempted by the buffet of rich royal blood on the horn pile, and dragged a trail of green from the puddle to the horns, and helped herself to the victim's neck. The victim undoubtedly woke up midway through the gruesome feast, fought back, and got a lance through the chest for her trouble. The perp then fled to the lab, thirsty for more. Yes, you're quite sure that 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 your theory doesn't make a lick of sense. You wish you had your crack team of experts to advise you. If only you hadn't kicked them all into the bottomless pit along with your trust, you probably your glasses accidentally. Damn your in their insubordination. Equius, seek the high blood. Is it a walk around or is it a flash? It's a walk around. Better? Talk about a radio. A ferocious and concerned Morail suddenly approaches out of out of some wild shrubberies. I regard the ferocious Morail stoically. I greet Miss Lejeune without issuing a statement of Axion in the first person. Ms. Lejeune ponders over whether Miss Mr. Zahak is still feeling blue over his departed robo sweetheart and we're cheering up. Mr. Zahak, I mean, I will probably be feeling blue about that for some time, yes. But he, darn it, I am exceptionally strong and will cope with it adequately. Even though she didn't even say goodbye for some reason. Aww. We can always curl up in the pile and talk about feelings. And Peta, for goodness sakes, a man can only discuss feelings for so much time. How long have we already spent in the robotic pile? Um, I think it's at least an hour. We examined my emotional state until we were both blue. <laughs> what? Blue, 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 blue. I just love how you say that word. Cam meow, my cam cam meow meal. It's awesome. We also gotta talk about other things. The panda, I think, it would behoove us to address the extreme danger in a serious manner. You mean about Gamzee? <laughs> I'm still not sure if I can believe it. That's because you still refuse to look upon our bloodlines as the deciding behavioral factors they are. Be behavioral? Behavioral. Sorry, my heart is galloping and I can't turn. I can't enunciate properly. The horse case scenario is upon us. Snort. His is the richest and most noble blood possible among the high land dwellers. As such, he is prone to being more violent and unpredictable than any of us. Not everyone has been as lucky as I in the domain of moral allegiance. I utter to think what I might be without you. Utter? Shudder. 
Oh, that's so sweet, Equius. You know I will always be ready to tackle Pouncy when you start getting especially furious. Yes, which is among the reasons why I must make your protection a high priority. The High Blood has joined a stable of those who are becoming increasingly volatile and murderous as we remain stranded in this laboratory. I command you to steer clear of them, do you understand? Hey, did you mean steer in the livestock sense? Yes. Well, if you're referring to, to Whiskers, I was already plenty scared of her. And if you're talking about Mr. Ampura, he has always given me the creeps anyway, so there's nothing to fret about. So prefer I, you hide, I mean prefer. Hide? Where? Behind the gate. Gate? You mean gate? What gate? What are you stalking about? I mean that door over there, you gosh darn silly face. Oh! Okay. One is pearl gray. This has been ste steeping for way too long, so it is undoubtedly very strong, just the way Equius likes it. Got an emergency backup absorbency. Legends tell of muscle beasts once roaming the cosmos that were so enormous they could destroy ent entire planets with but a twitch of any anatomical feature. Are the legends true? You hope so. Examine Broken Bow. Archery is so hard when you're this strong. You got a heap of fresh towels. I'm not sure if I should have eaten a pet or not. Open chest. Another towel. You got a fresh towel. Spoke these ominous stairs. We cannot go off looking for the hut high blood just yet. You must make sure Nepeta is somewhere safe. I gotta be in the peta. I will now seek the high blood, the peta. I command you to go to hide, as we discussed. Sure! But there are lots of nuts on the loose out there, so don't stick your neck out and take any big frisks. I will exact caution, even when safety looks to be, uh, look, look assured? Looks, even so. I would still like to take the opportunity to say, what? Goodbye. Well, okay, goodbye! But you had better believe I will see you again soon, Equius. Yes, you will. This piece is simply called Edward. It is so beautiful. Legends tell of muscle- okay. It just says the same things. Open the door! You just don't have the heart to update the wall to reflect the recent deaths of your friends. As a veteran shipper, you have grown accustomed to watching your ships get sunk, but not like this. Volternian paint sets are manufactured with a pigment from the blood of cold wigglers, which is pretty powerful when you think about it. Bat, 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 pounce, pounce, pounce. Which tea is this one? I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Examine Gamzee Carcat. You suppose this pairing is still viable, although the roles will have to be dramatically reversed. Yes, this matchup was always just so perfect to you. Why can't anyone else see it? Why can't they see? It's hard being a shipper. It's hard and no one understands. You will have to remember to write Jade a nice thank you note for helping to stabilize Karkat's unhealthy relationship with his past and future selves. Maybe now with a clear head he will be able to open his eyes to what waits for him in other quadrants. Certain other possibilities. Maybe noticing someone nice over there in that bright red corner who's been there all along. This is, um, a ship in progress. Human romance sure is weird. Uh... Oh no! No one must ever see! No one must ever see! Someday you will work up the guts to say something. Maybe once this huge murder, fi murder fiasco blows over. Sugar pile. Just looking at this pile is making you sleepy. And emotional. No one can ever accuse you of not being pr prepared to sweeten a warm beverage. Am I able to look at the other ones? No.
Enter great, you mean great. <clears throat> you suppose you should say put like Equi has said, but it's so frustrating being all cooped up in here. Surely scooting through the air ducts for a while couldn't hurt. You'll never know. Oh. Oh god. Use foot, berry, breath, Dr. Honey Tongue, what monster could do this? <clears throat> Did he murder the plushes? Look too great. Are you next? He <laughs> he next for what? Wait, did it say something on the What did it say over here? Oh, it just says Hawk. Yeah, he destroyed the plushies. Uh, enter great. Open chest. You got an enchanted shitty wizard figurine. It's a miracle. How did he break the... Someone has chopped this thing right in half. Maybe whoever is traversing these corridors does not want to be followed? You can certainly respect such sneaky tactics. Oh, that was probably Kanaya. It doesn't work! Yeah, that was probably Kanaya. Enter the grate. Are there any more turns? It's getting dark. It's the grate. Okay. Up the stairs. I just want to take the time to say this is so fucked up. Well, whatever's in there got loose. Open the chest. You got Ahab's Crawl's hairs. Perfect! This is exactly the kind of firepower you could use if you're going up against... You just broke it. Is this another hallway or is it going back to this? Oh, it's another hallway. I like the way the floor looks, though. It reminds me of candy. Getting darker. What is that? Arrows? Fired true straight through the eyes. Who could have done this? Does that mean that Gamzee knows how to use a bow? Ah, it's you, Pyro B. Have you seen the high blood about art smells? <laughs> Check it the motherfuck out! It's the peasant blood. <laughs> peasant blood? Is that a joke? It's your blood. It's a running motherfucking gag, then soon it will be running through my motherfucking fingers. The profanity is sickening. You'll stop. You'll. Kneel. You are not Pyrope. You are the high blood I should have known. Remove your counterfeit eyewear, uh, if you please, sir. I'll show you what I'm motherfucking if you show me what's motherfucking yours. What? It was a motherfucking 
joke. Hawk. We really should talk. You really should kneel. What was that? The volume of your voice keeps fluctuating. I said, kneel, motherfucker. I told you to motherfucking kneel, motherfucker! Next page. He used to be a high blood until he took an arrow to the knee. Ganji, sub jugulate. Sub sub jugulate. Honk. Honk! Honk. Honk! That's a lot of honks, I'm not gonna just say all those honks. Engage murder mode! Murder, 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 murder mode, mode, murder mode, mode. This is completely terrifying. There is about to not be an Equius anymore. There is not an Equius anymore. And now we know what in the pedestal. <laughs> Bim Gamzee, turn. That is a really messed up turn animation. Gamzee, draw deuce clubs from strife deck. Counts of Eng! Snap. So, it was brought to my attention through Tumblr a little while ago that that snap right there was him catching her hand and crushing her wrist. Scrape. Honk! 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 Blurred honk! Beep! Is that a honk? Oh. John, take car. This is why seatbelt safety should always be paramount. Remember to boggle up! John, proceed to the castle. Perhaps this is the one? As you approach, you make an attempt to contact your friends for verification. But there's no answer from Jade or from Rose. You wonder what they could be up to. It seems someone else is bugging you. John, answer Friska. Arachnus Grip began trolling ectobiologists. Hi, John. Oh, hey there, Friska. Hey, this wait, I was about to check out this castle to see if my dad is here. Your guardians are not here! Oh. Dang it. Do you know where they are? Yes, they're in another castle. Don't worry, you'll find them later. Ah, uh, how much later? In a while, man, settle down. I'm telling you that you will find them you will find them after a little more questing around your awesome blue godhood. So why don't you relax and talk to me for a while? Well, okay, I guess so. Why don't you have your hood up, by the way? Shrug. You look great with the hood up. And anyway, we should be showing a little pride as the only ones to make gods here, don't you think? Psh. I don't know if it's much of a major accomplishment, honestly. John, are you mad at me? Uh, no? Then what's the matter? I guess I just missed my dad. I was hoping he would be here, but apparently I won't see him for another few hours or whatever? If that is what you see in the future, then I guess there's no fighting it. Yeah. I still find it a little hard to understand the sentimentality you attach to these adult humans. It just seems so strange to me, but hey, that's alien culture for you. Yeah, I know. I guess you just have to think of them as the way you think of your lusses. Sis? Lus I? Yeah, sort of. Except I never much liked mine that much. Even after I prototyped her, things were pretty chilly between us. I spent most of my adventure avoiding her, haha. <laughs> that is too bad. John, are you sure you're not mad at me? No, why would I be mad at you, Vriska? Because I tricked you into getting killed! Oh, right. I actually almost forgot about that. Would it help if I said I was sorry? Why would you need to apologize, though? I mean, I admit I was pretty confused about it at first, seeing my dead body in the cloud and all. But in the end, you did it to help me, didn't you? 
Really, I should probably be thanking you. Uh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I wasn't sure what to say for a moment. I'm just so incredibly relieved you're not angry with me. Eh. I really don't know what reason I could have to be angry, I mean, aside from the deception involved, but I kind of understand why you did that. And in any case, you did give me a choice. Yes, I did. I don't know, John. You'd be surprised how often people resent it when you try to help them. But see, you really get it. That's why you're special. Shrug. Heart. So, is that what you wanted to talk to me about? Yes. Well, not exactly. Then what is it? I know this is going to probably sound especially to a, especially to a human, but I just killed someone. You did? Who was it? You mean like a bad guy? Not exactly. Oh yeah, Carcat mentioned he was in trouble and then had to go. It made it. He made me a little worried. Are you guys under attack or something? I'm not sure what his deal is. I haven't seen him in a while, but we're not under attack. Not yet, at least. Oh, well then, who did you kill? He was a friend. Someone from our team. Why? It's a little complicated. Well, did he attack you or something? Yes, but really, that's not why I killed him. He was no match for me, and I could have just incapacitated him or flown away or whatever. The truth is I killed him because at the time, I thought I wanted to, and sort of felt like I finally had to. Uh, why did you have to? Because enough was enough! You don't know- you, you don't even know how frustrating it was to be friends with him! I used to really like him and always wanted to help him get stronger, so he might stand a fucking chance to actually make it in our world. But he was just so weak and indecisive, he wouldn't change! And then when he tried to change, it was too little, too late. Always late. Lady, lady, late! Too late to kiss me, too late to kill me. He couldn't do it when I really needed him to, so when I saw he was actually serious about trying to kill me now of all times, I just got so angry! I am still a bit upset thinking about it. So I killed him, and I'm pretty sure he's dead for good now. Wow, you're right, Vriska. That does not sound good. I know! I know our races are completely different, and I really hate the idea of you thinking worse of me because of this, but I don't have anyone else to talk to about it. You don't? What about all your friends? I bet Carcat will listen, or what about Terezi? She's pretty nice, isn't she? No, 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 no! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No! I mean, yeah, they're fine, but I can't talk to them! Why not? For one thing, they would probably just be pissed off at me for killing Tavros. And more importantly, there's no way I could tell them how I really feel about it. Well, how do you feel? HORRIBLE! And if any of my friends knew that, they would think I'm weak. Oh. I guess I understand. I mean, I'm trying to, with the cultural difference and all. Do you? Like, trolls are more violent and angry, right? Kind of like Klingons or something, which is an angry race of space alien savages from a human TV show. We aren't savages, you dope. Oh, I know, that's not what I meant. But I'm, I'm guessing you all have to act tough to make it on your world. And have a sense of honor about fighting and like to beat people up and stuff, right? Uh, yeah, let's say close enough. But I think that no matter what alien culture you're from, killing is still wrong, and it sounds like you do too. Yeah, see, this is where our cultures clash, I think. It would be difficult to explain exactly how killing is viewed on our planet with all the nuance involved. It isn't just the black and white thing humans seem to think it is. Well, you can try. I'm listening. On my world, it would be completely vindicated. I would, I would be completely vindicated for killing him. He is far lower on the human spectrum than me. He managed to disrespect me time and time again, but I kept letting him live. In fact, the amount of slack I cut him would be considered scandalous by those in my class. I had every reason to kill him, and yet I feel bad about it, like a lame, weak fudge blood, just like he was. And the fact that I feel bad is why I'm sort of freaking out right now. I think if you feel bad, it just means you have a conscience, which is good, right? No, that's not how it works. I'm supposed to be just fine with it. This was sort of like a test, and I'm afraid I might be failing. I wasn't a, like a test. Well, it was the first time I killed somebody. Okay. Wait, okay, that's not really true. I What I meant was, it was the first time I killed somebody I cared about. So, you killed other people that you didn't care about? Yes, yeah, sort of a lot, actually. But there was a really good reason for that. Hmm. How many, or do I want to know? Oh, it doesn't matter. Prob probably many thousands. Uh, holy shit. God, I know how this sounds, but I have to feed her! My lustus, I mean. I've basically been playing this role as a slave in the food chain my whole life. It's what she selected me to do. I guess that is why you didn't get along with her? Hell yes. I see. So that is a lot of killing, Jesus. Yeah, but I never felt anything about it. It was just normal life for me. But then you finally killed a guy you liked, and not so cool anymore. 
Yeah. Oh, okay, that's not quite right. He's the second person I care about who I killed. Man, I always forget about her. Uh, I guess she wound up getting me back pretty good, though, so we're even. Oh, also, technically, I attempted to kill that same guy around the same time, but I just wound up paralyzing him. Oops! <laughs> but man, that was sweeps ago. I think I had a really juvenile attitude about killing back then. I was, I think I was trying too hard? I was always really obsessed with being the best at stuff, and I guess I was trying to be precocious in that respect as well, and prove to everyone how brutal I could be. But I was such a confused kid, I didn't know anything about what killing really means. I was trying to fake it, and it caused me nothing but problems. I guess I had no idea how different we really were. What I'm hearing is seriously scaring the shit out of me! Yeah, I know. I wish we didn't have to be so different. I'm just trying to be honest with you, because like I said, I have nowhere else to go. Okay, well, I appreciate the honesty, so... If killing isn't exactly wrong, then what is it? What do you mean by what killing really means? Okay, I want to take a second to uh, drink some lemonade. Yeah, that's great. If you know what Halo Farm is, go there and get some lemonade. It's fantastic. <clears throat> I guess I have to admit I don't really know what that much about humans either. Other than that, you're all pretty soft and mild-mannered and seem to be friendlier and think killing totally sucks. I really have no clue what it means to grow up as a human, though. But I do know what it means to grow up as a troll and what's expected of us. What does it mean? When a troll comes of age, you better believe it means they're going to start killing. It's what we do as a race. We're very efficient conquerors, and as such, we practically dominate our galaxy. Or used to. The ones that don't learn to be ruthless, they're better off dead. And the reality is, it won't be long until they are. That's just life for us. <clears throat> that sounds terrible! I would like to be culturally sensitive, but I wish it didn't have to be like that for you. I started to really like you guys! Well, thanks, John. That's nice of you to say, but let's face it. It doesn't fucking matter anymore, since our whole race was wiped out. Maybe for the best when you think about it. Mm. But at least Paradox Space gave us some purpose before wiping us out, right? At least we got the chance to create you guys and all those twinkly stars you used to look up at. Yeah, that's true. So because we got that chance, it means we'll never actually get to come of age and enter a troll society and see if we got what it takes. But that doesn't mean we stop growing up. I think the game knows it's always going to be played by kids, and it always rigs it so they enter right around the cusp of sexual maturity, whatever the race is. Which kind of makes sense, since if they succeed, they've got their whole lives ahead of them to do whatever the hell they're going to do in their universe, like start repopulating or what and whatnot. That means the game also knows it's got to deal with all these damn kids who are coming of age while playing it. I really think how successfully uh, they mature is tied to the success in the game. It challenges the players in all the ways they need to be challenged to grow, which is different for every individual and very different for every race. I don't think we're so hot at that aspect of the game. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're, we're quite awful. Hell, I, even I wasn't that great at it. I actually just kind of fell ass backwards into the gods here, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, me too. But what really gets me is this didn't even occur to me till just now while I was sitting around thinking about it. It was so obvious! What? That's why the game split us up into two teams. It knew as we came of age we'd probably start killing each other. So it just provided the stage, red team versus blue. It was so simple, all we had to do was what we were naturally inclined to. It might have worked out better for us. Uh... I don't really see how you guys killing each other would help you play the game better. Yeah, you'd think that would be counterproductive, but then again, maybe not. If we really did take the team thing seriously and started killing each other, maybe it would have meant more god tiers. Maybe all of us would have made it. Damn, can you imagine we would have breezed through the game even faster, killed the king without a sweat? Maybe claimed the reward before ja even Jack even showed up? Or if we did, maybe we could have beaten him then and there instead of scurrying off like cowards. In retrospect, we failed at this so spectacularly, I'm amazed and kind of ashamed. It turned out the only one of us with the guts to kill someone was already dead! <laughs> and boy did I have it coming. Dead? Yeah, she was a ghost and then became a robot, and she became a thousand robots, then Jack killed all but one, then she blew up. Oh, and she also had that exact bizarre laptop you were using right now, how weird is that? Gosh, your team is so crazy. Not crazy enough, apparently. Actually, this is probably Carcat's fault. How? When it comes down to it, he was probably too good a leader. He actually did manage to get two, the two teams to work together towards the same goal. 
It could have easily deteriorated into a feud otherwise. He was just so loud and annoying and obsessed with leadership. He wouldn't shut up! So it was just easier to go along with his plans. Huh. Yeah, I can see how that could be true. He sure kept us working together, but in the end I think we paid for it. It wasn't natural! Pretty fitting, really, since he's kind of a freak himself. He's not even on the Hema spectrum, the weirdo! And I really doubt he would have handled it as a leader if the shit ever hit the whirling device. He likes to pretend he's all vicious and bloodthirsty, but I know he he ain't got it in him. I have a sense for these things. He'd be so pissed if he heard me say this, but I think he'd cut it better as a human than as a troll. You probably mean that as an insult, but I think it is a nice compliment. But I won't tell him you said it. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm gonna stop here. Let me save the game. So in the next episode, Teresi's gonna message Carcat somehow, so he knows that she's still alive. If he's still alive. There's no telling how many people are alive or dead right now. We'll just have to wait and see. So anyway, this has been Anashi Sasuke. Thank you guys for sticking around for this episode of Let's Read Homestuck. Whichever episode it is, it's in the 50s. I don't know which 50. It might be 57. So, I will see you guys next time, and I hope you all have a great 2017. And I really hope we have a better 2017 than, than 2016. Later!